back to now season two of Behind the Badge. I'm Trent Ferris, Public Information Officer here at the York County Sheriff's Office and also your host. And if you noticed, we're not only just on the podcasting service of Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the places in which you can get podcasts, we're also doing these on video. So if you're watching us, welcome. If you're listening to us, welcome. Uh, we appreciate you listening and learning a little bit of everything of the ins and outs of the York County Sheriff's Office um, because we're just trying to be open and transparent as we can and also teach you a few things along the way about crime prevention, um, learning about people and what people do here at the York County Sheriff's Office and also public safety. And that's all to get the right information to the right people. That is you, the citizen of York County at the right time so you can make right and informed decisions so on that public safety note we're here this week with not a stranger to the podcast ryan quinn he's a sergeant over our traffic enforcement unit he is out there burning up the roads making sure that you are obeying all our traffic laws in your county and uh you've been on the podcast a few times i wanted to get a couple of people uh, you know before we've done hey give us your traffic safety questions like hey what, what's your question um but I didn't have time to do that. So next time, next time, we'll, we'll ask you your questions on our social media pages. You send them in, and we'll have uh, Sergeant Quinn answer them. Now, we did that a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Bowie, who is no longer with the traffic yep. unit, he is now SRO, yep. we did a, the Facebook Live. And we all know that you like the Facebook Live stuff, but just know it takes a lot to do the Facebook Live stuff to go out on a patrol. Oh, yeah. And we're going to do that yep. with you. Yep. Eventually. Me or one of my guys. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, eventually we're going to do that again because I think that that helped uh, folks understand yes. a few things about what goes on on the road. Yep. So. I would definitely like to do a DUI type of night. Um, yes. If not with me, then my DUI. Uh, oh, well, I'll go out there. My DUI guy. So. Um, because we do have a person who is uh, Chris Anderson, right? Uh, no, it's actually uh, Marthone now. Definitely oh, Marthone. okay. Yep. Definitely Marthone is our... Yep specifically out there targeting those impaired drivers correct yep and he is tearing it up good yes he um has made seven dui arrests so far in those 70 numbers. like seven zero no seven, seven. oh no. Like, good gosh no, seven dui arrests so far in november and that's been and it's only the 22nd at the time of this recording so for for reference a good month for any patrol officer or person on my units two or three four months really you know, four is really good. Um, I mean, they, they take a lot of time, hours, yeah. hours and hours for each one. Sure. Including the paperwork and, you know, the reports and stuff you got to do. Um, so seven is just killing it. Um, and well, that's good. <laughs> it's good that we're getting them off the road, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I, I, was, I would prefer that we, the whole sheriff's office, would have zero every month, right? Because yeah. we can't find them because they're not out there. Right. Right. But we all know that they're out there mm-hmm. so we're going to do our part in taking them off the streets and i would encourage york county citizens to please call us if they are behind what they know to be um, an intoxicated driver you know you're seeing those signs the wide wide turns yep. is the number one indicator of impaired driving a wide turn like if they're making a right hand yep. turn and they go all the way into the other lane and then come back into the lane they're supposed to be in they're you know they're doing that consistently you know slow driving, you know, weaving in the lane, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. We've all been behind those people before. So. Well, let's talk about that. It's like, it, I guess the misconception is people think, oh, I better not call. They're so busy. Uh, I mean, what should, what, no, it's really just a call to 911. Yeah, call, I mean, call 911, call our non merch number, 628-3056. And, um, you know, if we have anybody in the area, we'll we'll try to get to you. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say that we're always 100% of the time going to have somebody right there. Mm-hmm. If, if we don't, we generally will transfer you to the highway patrol see if they have somebody in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, but please call. Like, we don't know if you don't call. Right. You know, we, we can't even try if you don't call. So, call. Right. The, don't be scared. Correct. Don't be upset if, you know, like, oh, gosh, that guy's going to get mad at me if I call him. No. no. We'd rather check okay. it out. Yeah. And whether you're in the area or not. Right. You could pass that on to the Highway Patrol. Right. Or Rock Hill PD or Clover or right. Fort Mill, whichever. Right. Because, I mean, people got to go through towns yep. to get to where Generally, yep. Yeah, so we we do need to get those impaired drivers off the road. Yep. Because, um, I mean, we're, we're talking about it. It's all, the day of this recording is on the 22nd. This week is Thanksgiving holiday week. A lot of people going to be on the road. Yep. A lot of people going to be driving. Yep. And... Uh, I mean, it's a celebration. It's time to give thanks and get together with your families. But, of course, 
anything that impairs your ability to safely uh, operate, a oper- operate a vehicle yeah. is impaired driving. It's Correct. not always just drunk driving. Correct. So um, talk about that. Is this one of those weeks where uh, Martha is going to be out there busting it up? Yep. Um, so towards the end of the week, we'll definitely be out. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the Highway Patrol has some things planned throughout the week. So just be on the lookout for that. Hint, hint. <laughs> They're the Highway Patrol. Yes. Has and some you guys, planned. and everybody has something planned. We're not going to tell you right. where it's planned. Correct. But you should have that in the back of your mind that I better not do this tonight. I better right. not overindulge. I better not get behind the wheel if I've been drinking or doing whatever else. Well, historically, you know, in the years I've been here, the holidays are always, always, always um, – top season for impaired, impaired drivers right. like um, I look back at my stats throughout the years and always November December January that that time of year is always my top top of the top of the line for as far as impaired driving goes throughout the year and it's not that you're out there trying to ruin somebody's holiday no oh absolutely not it's, 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 it's you're not out there trying to ruin you're trying to keep them from ruining somebody else's I, holiday I'll tell, I'll tell I'll tell everybody who listens that getting the uh, DUI where they're drunk or high or anything like that getting them off the road is stopping a murder in progress yeah no kidding I mean because they, it because it potentially could be right yeah. I mean I'm not sure if you have but I've been mm-hmm. on those you know fatality wreck calls mm-hmm. where the other person was impaired you know and they've killed somebody else right like mm-hmm. that's somebody that, that we've got to go knock on their on their family's door and they're not coming home for the holidays so I tell I tell my guys I'm like you're every Every drunk, every high person that you're getting off the road while they're driving, you're stopping a potential murder. That's awesome. That's a way to think of it. We're trying to keep people from killing somebody else's loved one. Correct. Because you know, somebody's making a dumb decision to get behind the wheel right. after drinking or doing some kind of drugs or whatever. Right. You know, and prevention is what you know any police department should be about. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're about here, especially on, at least on my unit. That's what we do. And I know most of the other units do the same thing. Obviously. Good, good, good. Well, good. Uh, so remember that, folks. This weekend, if you're driving, it's Black Friday weekend. We know you're going to be out. You're going to be eating lunch all day. You're going to be tired. You're probably going to do something to wake yourself up. I don't know whether that what that could be, but you're going to get out on the road for Black Friday after Thanksgiving, this and that, whatever else, and all through the weekend celebrating. So just put that little reminder in the back of your head that I better not do this. I better not. I'm going to have a good time with my family and everything, but if I feel funny, anything that makes you feel different. If you feel different, don't drive. Yeah, don't drive. So it's really simple. And, it got, you know, I think last week or two weeks ago, it was uh, Drowsy Driving Awareness Week. Mm-hmm. We put some stuff on our social media pages, and even that is an impairing your ability to drive a car. It Correct. sounds crazy. We always talk about drunk drivers and people who are doing drugs and driving, but also if you're tired. Yeah. I mean, generally, you know, so... Driving while tired is, while technically not against the law, because yeah. it it does it can impair your ability, but you have to have some sort of substance, alcohol or drugs or a combination True. for DUI. But it's still you could be charged with reckless driving, yeah. driving off the center, you know, all different sort of moving violations if you're falling asleep while you're driving, right? Yeah. Right. And there there's been plenty of cases where um, drowsy driving has mimicked impairment, and that arrest has been made. You know, yeah. and nothing comes back and. But we had probable cause at the time to make the arrest, yeah. so we did. You know, so tryptophan in your turkey could make you drowsy enough to impair your ability to drive. Right. And you, I mean, I've done it. Yeah. I've nodded off at the wheel. Yep. Yeah. And I've, I, I was telling somebody that the other day we were coming back from the academy for a, um, a graduation we just had, and I was in the with Jonathan Gilbert, who will be on the podcast in a couple of weeks. Our crime, our community relations officer. Um, I was telling him, say that that those row of trees in Blythewood, mm-hmm. yeah, right after you pass Blythewood, coming yep. out of Columbia, there's that little section of trees on the I-77. Yep. I was telling him, said when I was in, I just got out of the Navy. I was coming back to Columbia because I was living in Columbia. And I was driving south, and I had to get to work early that morning. And I'd stayed up late, of mm-hmm. course, hanging out with my friends up here in Rock Hill. Mm-hmm. I wasn't. I hadn't been drinking or anything like that. Uh, but I was tired, yep. and I remember in my little Ford Ranger at the time, just mm-hmm. veering off the road. And if it weren't for the rumble strips and grass, yep. I probably would have ended up in, in that row of trees. trees. Yep. So it's not that I had been right. drinking or anything like that. I was just tired, right? 
and that impaired my ability to drive the truck right, and I almost plowed into a pine tree right there in Blythewood. Yep. So that's just what we're, that's, that's why we're trying to tell everybody, to so make sure you're going to be rested whenever you're driving, going to wherever you're going, especially if you're listening to this now as you're driving to your Thanksgiving celebrations. It's something you need to think about. Oh, this is another thing. I know texting and driving is one of those things where it's hard to yep. it's hard to get people texting and driving. But just remember, folks, if you get a text message from your family member saying, hey, how long are you going to be? How much longer are you going to be? We're going to eat lunch at 1. Are you going to be here with at, by 1? And they send a text message. Mm-hmm. You know, ignore it. Correct. Ignore the text message. If you, if you absolutely have to respond and pull off. In the next exit, or pull off into a parking lot somewhere and text back. I, I, we've seen way too many incidents where people have gotten struck from, on the rear. Um, if they pull off on the side of the interstate, mm-hmm. for example, we've had numerous people killed that way yeah. um, across the state of South Carolina this year. So I tell people like, if you got to pull off, just go to the next exit. Yeah. Like, don't pull off on the side of the interstate if you, yeah. unless you absolutely have to. They make rest areas for a reason. Correct. <laughs> they yes. they're literally called rest areas. Yep. <laughs> And they have free Wi-Fi at some of them. So yep. you can even do that right. Stuff, so. so take advantage of that. All right, switching gears. Um, I know earlier, uh, I mean, it's only November. School started in late August. Um, we told, we, we warned folks that yep. you guys were going to be out there yep. on the roads in school zones because we were, one, looking for speeders mm-hmm. in those school zones and people who were just driving safe and passing stop school buses, all, you, you name it, anything to keep kids from getting hurt going to school. Right. Um, one of our most famous and favorite uh, Facebook posts was one day you caught somebody, you, yep. <laughs> getting somebody going 60 miles an hour in a 30 yep. in front of a school, yep. three schools if you count the schools in that area. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've had actually two. I'm not sure if I ever sent you the second. I, I think I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. The, the, the first still, one I had was still popular. A, yeah, the first one I had was not the same area. It was like a six. It was I think it was a sixty-eight or sixty-nine or thirty-five. What? Yeah, it was I can't. Pretty, I can't remember. It was pretty high. Yeah, it was really. It was almost double. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, those happen all the time. You know, like we couldn't post how many we have because it happens so frequently. Right. I mean, yeah. Bowie and I. I wrote the day we did the yep. Facebook Live. We were in a school zone and. People, we got somebody going fifty. And, right. And I mean, yeah. I mean, that's still pretty, pretty. Yeah. High. Oh yeah. I mean, fifty yeah. to thirty-five during drop-off and pickup times is way too fast, right? In front of an elementary school and a high school. Right. And a lot of and a lot of these schools have foot traffic in the area, mm-hmm. right? So, and you, know, you got kids walking on the side of the road trying to get home, stuff like that. And it's just not worth it. I know from time to time, my kids walk from right. one school to the other yep. to get to my daughter who drives and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just, you never know. Right. Just. Slow it down. It, and I guess folks may think that, oh, school's out, or no, or not school's out, but oh, they only do that for the first two weeks or so of, no. of the school year. Now that's, that's Remind been, folks. That's been a point of emphasis um, for me in my unit this, this, uh, this school year is that we're really putting a focus on school zones. Yeah. Um, I tell them, I'm like, if you got a free minute, go work school zones. Yes. Go work school zones. Yes, exactly. So... As we were saying, um, you know, school zone enforcement is extremely important and yeah. something that we're focusing on. Well, it's just that, I mean, people, I mean, it's, it, it bothers me. I mean, you see the lights flashing. Yep. It says school zone, flashing lights, 35 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, whatever miles an hour, and people just ignore it and I, blow through it. I generally, what I do when I work school zones is I will sit, if there's, especially if there's a median, mm-hmm. I will sit right in the center of the median, right, in my fully marked York County Sheriff's patrol car, and they will still blow my doors off in a school zone. And I obviously I will go stop them, and I'm like, did you not see me sitting there? Did you not see the school zone yeah. flashing lights? Oh, I'm just trying to get to work. No. Like, well, I mean, you're going to go to work, but it's going to be it's going to cost you a little bit of money. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't we're not just writing tickets for like I don't think any benefit. Yeah. Like none of us do here. Yeah. But. Health, hopefully that helps people remember for next time when they go through that same area or yeah. another school zone, hey, maybe I should slow down. Just, it's kind of a little bit of a, a reinforcement type of thing. I love it because, I mean, I think – and I guess I, remind everybody how many people you have on the traffic unit right yeah. now. So it's me, um, Deputy Marthone, who's our DUI mm-hmm. enforcement guy. He works all nights. Um, Deputy Anderson, mm-hmm. um, who's also another primarily day shift guy that yeah. works along with, along with me. Um, and then we also 
were recently awarded the overtime grant by the state. Mm-hmm. So we have some patrol guys who come out on their days off and work um, strictly traffic as well. Yeah. But assigned to my unit per, on the full-time basis, it's three, including me. Three plus the part-time guys. Right. Ish. And we don't have those every day. Yeah. Um, but – you know, days here and there, they come out and work, you know, six, five, six hours at a time and so the biggest, supplements us. The biggest complaint we always get is, like, say we uh, – the one day I posted a picture of you on – I think the I think it was Fire Tower Road. Mm-hmm. You're only one guy. Yep. You're only three guys. Right. Well, two. Three, yeah. Two plus the part-time guy. Yeah, because they don't come in until 4 p.m. So. Oh, see? So it's really only two during the day. That's full-time. Now, we do have folks who, who get upset that you need to be – this road all the time, right here in front of this school, or traffic is really bad. There's speeders down my road all the time. People complain. Yes, we get those. Yes. We understand that. Yep. But you can't be everywhere at one time. I mean, you know, we're, well, we can only do, like, we do the best we can, but yeah. we can only do so much, right? Like, we can't be in more than one spot at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a whole county. The population of this county is, what, over 250,000, I believe now. Yeah. You know. We do the best we can. What we got, type of yeah. type of situation, right? So the best thing to do is if you have a an issue about speeding, and we, if somebody sent in a complaint or a traffic enforcement, we we, we really request. try to get we really try to get to them. Yeah. Right. Like I can't I can't sit in front of you and tell you that we've worked every single complaint because we haven't. Yeah. Because we just don't have the manpower. Right. But we try to get to as most you know as many as we can. Well, I think it was uh, Eastview Road was when I was in training. Um, Eastview Road was one of those good plant areas. Yep, and I've worked that from yeah. time to time. Yeah, and and, it, and our patrol deputies who are, you know, they're bouncing, shagging, call to call. Right. They fill in the blanks when you can. Correct, yeah. And the the district commanders, the district lieutenants yeah. are good about sending out, you know, complaints that they get as well yeah. to the patrol guys, and they try to go work on those as, as they can. But obviously calls for service come in, you know, priority. Good, 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 good. All right, so we've talked about holiday drinking and driving. We've talked about school zones. How is it? What What else can folks do to help you out to wrap this up? You know, on. For- I'll just tell you, to pack your patience. <laughs> um, I love it. Yeah, we're 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 continuing to see increased um, road rage incidents, mm-hmm. especially on the interstates. Um, there's pro- there's not really a day that goes by now that we don't have a man with a gun call. That's true. Somebody pointing a gun at somebody on the interstate because of a road rage incident. Yeah. Um, it's just not worth it, right? Like, just if they cut you off, just let them go about the way, right? It's just not worth getting into a, you know, God forbid, a shooting with them or um, you getting shot at over yeah. something stupid. Like, you're trying to go to your family's house or wherever you're trying to go for the, for that day. It's like it's just not worth it, right? I mean, those people just don't understand. Yeah, I still understand. I've, I've always, it's always baffled me people who get upset at other people and get road rage. Right. Now, I mean, of course, I get yeah, – we've I mean, all done it. We've all, get, we've all <laughs> gotten mad like it's <laughs> something that somebody does, right? Right. But I don't go pull, you know, pulling out a gun and pointing at somebody because they pissed me off. Yeah. Or, excuse me, they uh, yeah, made right. me mad. <laughs> this podcast, we do whatever we want. You know? No, yeah, no you, make, you get mad and people get upset. I mean, if you're going down the interstate or any kind of road and somebody cuts you off and you have to hit your brakes, and yeah, it's going to make you mad. Right. But there's no need to no. – Flip them the bird, yell at them, go right. pull up behind them, get real you know, up on their bumper to quote unquote teach them a lesson or something like that, or tell them how how you mad you because, are. It's, it's not worth. Because it. guess whose fault it is if you were in them. It's your, your fault. fault. That's right. Especially a gun. Let's leave that out of the whole right. equation altogether. Jeez. So, but um, all right, Sergeant Ryan Quinn. Anything else you want to? Uh, impart on us as far as traffic safety as, uh, as people are listening to this podcast on their trip to their Thanksgiving holiday celebrations be patient like I said <laughs> um, you know, that's, don't, that's, drink and drive. don't drink and drive don't drop why do you smoke your marijuana or your crack cocaine or anything like that yeah. so um, you know it's not just drinking it's any sort yep. of drug that can impair your ability to drive a vehicle safely it used to be a thing it used to be just drinking and driving now no, you have to worry about I would, pills and marijuana would, and this and that whatever i would say 25 to 40 percent of our DUI arrests are non-alcohol related wow and whatever side of the debate you have on the marijuana debate it still impairs you from driving correct you can you can feel however you want to about you know legalization or, yeah. or, or not of marijuana, but you still, even in the states that have legalized it, it's still against the law to drive under the influence of it. So there you go. So that's 
So, yes, if you're listening to this and you're going to be getting all mad at me because we talked about marijuana and driving it, yeah, it impairs your ability to effectively drive a car. 100%. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and you are what they call a drug recognition expert. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you can tell. Yes. It's <laughs> really easy to, actually. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. So don't do it. Because yeah. uh, Sergeant Quinn will be out there getting uh, checking you to make sure. Because I haven't had any drink tonight. Now, what's that old car? Uh, there's a video out mm-hmm. there. Now, I, do, I do not free base cocaine. Yeah. Now, I smoke a joint yeah. every now and then. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen that plenty of times. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's not the same. It's not the same. Sorry. All right. All right, folks, well, one last thing. If you are a regular listener of the podcast, please go tell your friends and family, especially if they're heading out on the road for this holiday weekend, to listen to the podcast about traffic safety. Please tell them to listen to it, or you can watch it here on uh, YouTube or Facebook or however you're watching this, because uh, I did some research. Uh, the increase of people watching uh, podcasts inc- has increased about 50% since last year. Hmm. People like to watch us, so that's why we're doing this now, so you can see my ugly face and it's how handsome Sergeant Ryan Quinn is. So so that's why we do the podcast on uh, where you can listen to it in your car and or watch it at your desk or wherever. Just don't watch it while you're driving. Correct. Just don't watch a podcast while you're driving. Listen to it, but don't watch it. So, um, Folks, we always uh, try to keep you up to date with everything going on in the York County Sheriff's Office. If you have any questions, please email us at... Uh, sheriff.info at yorkcountygov.com or you can email me sheriff.pio at yorkcountygov.com or you just follow us on our Facebook page that's where we put everything anyway and we can see this podcast on there and whatnot. so we try to keep everything uh, out there to help you stay safe not just this weekend but throughout the year so we appreciate you thank you Sergeant Ryan Quinn for coming in here and talking with us and we thank you for listening and watching YCSO Behind the Badge